There are a few essential things our bodies need to boost our immune system and stay healthy, especially in a colder season. Me and my family use Z-Stack, Z-Detox, and Z-Flu developed by the great Dr. Zelenko, who has a place in history for his tremendous life's work. With every purchase of Z-Stack or any other of Dr. Zelenko's products, you also support the Zelenko Freedom Foundation in their tireless work to bring back medical truth and freedom to everyone. To save on your Z-Stack order today, use coupon code INSPIRED. Please find the link to order down below. Hey, hey, Inspire Tribe, my fellow freedom lovers, John Nolan here. Thank you so much for tuning in to another Inspired Conversation, a very timely and important one. And we are grateful and excited and feel blessed to welcome back a wonderful man, Dane Wigginton from geoengineeringwatch.org. Thank you so much for joining us again today, Dane. Thank you, John, for your constant efforts to encourage many that need it in these dark days on the planet and certainly uh, these are very strange days on planet earth but the intentional manipulation of the planet's life support systems poses a grave and immediate threat and most don't know the totality of what they're doing in our skies dane we just talked about it off camera i think in this journey of great awakening where people are waking up to so many truths that were hidden Reminders and repetitions are very important, and sometimes current events really give us the opportunity to do that. We are, as we speak, there is a freak storm sweeping over North America. And Christine and I both had, you know, the intuitive feeling this is not a natural event. And when we reached out to you, Dane, for this conversation, you immediately said, yes, you're right. This isn't, this is engineered. What is happening? What are we witnessing? How are they doing it? And what are the effects of it? Well, first, in regard to the engineered nature of this, my previous two broadcasts, Geoengineering Watch's weekly update called Global Alert News, commercial, free, non-political, I've, I've stated this was coming because we see where they record the scheduled weather. And that's, in fact, what it is because we have private defense contractors, Raytheon and Lockheed Martin, neck deep in the climate engineering operations. That's who does the modeling for all the National Weather Service and National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. All their modeling is done by these private defense contractors because they have to have, the narrative has to match what they have planned for the scheduled weather. So we've announced for two weeks this was coming. And the method in which they set up for these storms is, is very predictable and profound and they are manipulating moisture. They need a great deal of moisture to what's called chemical ice nucleation for weather modification. These are patented processes. We have a lot of historical recording of these operations going on, especially when China does it, even US media records it. Your followers can search Chinese scientists create artificial snowstorm, and they'll find Fox News covered it, Popular Science, MSNBC, CBS. But when it's done here, as we discussed off air, people uh, or the media sources here accuse everyone of being a conspiracy theorist. And again, we're not guessing. We know what's in this material and as far as the climate engineering elements. And when we see these moisture flows coming off the record warm Gulf of Mexico, feeding a freak snowstorm and flash freeze event, something's radically wrong. And we know what that is. It's climate engineering. So... Um, you said this is scheduled, and you also mentioned, and we've seen these reports now for many years, uh, especially around big events in China, they will engineer the weather as they need it, right? And and the media has even gotten less critical of that. I think they're just reporting on it as terms of matter of fact. And as you say, when it happens here constantly, we are conspiracy theorists and tinfoil hats that, that you know, um, talk about something that's impossible. But... You say they plan it ahead of time and they need to make their narrative fit. What is the specific, what do you think, in your opinion, what's the specific purpose of this extreme winter storm? That's a really important question, John. And this is a psychological operation in many aspects. It, it helps to skew the overall global temperature data to mask the severity of damage done to the planet. When you have this type of surface cool down, and that's what it is a surface cool down. If you go uh, one or 2,000 feet up atmospherically, the temperatures go way higher, and that is profoundly wrong historically. So the chemical ice nucleation operations create a cold surface layer 
And think about this, especially the timing of this, and this has happened in previous the previous few years as well, right around the holidays when people are traveling, when they're most affected by these types of flash cool downs and the quote winter weather, it leaves a very deep impression on them of how cold, cold, cold it is. How could the planet be warming when it's so cold outside? They sensationalize these events tremendously. If you, if you watch various climate engineering cover-up sources like the Weather Channel, Weather Central, and others that are all owned by the same matrix that is involved with climate engineering, it's not hard to see that they are following the same, the same script with the, the words they use to describe what's happening, uh, deadly cold, uh, you know, extremely frigid temperatures. They, they try to portray wind chill temperatures, and this is important, and it's revealing of what they're trying to do. Again, back to the objective. They portray wind chill temperatures in a way that's confusing for the population and makes the population mistakenly believe that the wind chill temperatures are the actual temperatures. All of this adds up to trying to portray how cold it is, and yet we don't have this kind of coverage when it's profoundly warm with heat waves that are week after week after week, but they sensationalize the winter events right around the holidays. It's a psychological operation again to help keep the public oblivious as to, again, the true damage to the planet. They're confused and divided as to is the planet warming or not warming when they have this kind of cool down. And if you look at the world temperature maps, the departure from normal temperature maps, you see a big blue spot of below normal temperatures in this part of parts of North America when most of the rest of the planet is red. So again, for Americans to think, and they do, if it's cold outside their doorstep, it must be cold everywhere. And that is absolutely not the case. We have uh, record heat and wildfires right now in South America. How many Americans know that? We have, uh, there's temperatures in parts of northeastern Canada near the Arctic Circle that are warmer than Texas right now. And people don't know that either. So they, they see what the media shows them. And again, the bottom line is this is not nature. This is absolutely an engineered event. We've tested the precipitation at geoengineeringwatch.org. We find the usual elements, aluminum, barium, strontium, manganese, polymer fibers in the, in the frozen material based on patents for this type of operation, chemical ice nucleation. We also find surfactants, and there's also synthetic urea, which is a, an interesting element that's used for ice nucleating operations, as is graphene. And John, you know graphene is a very lethal element. It's in our precipitation now. It's part of the chemical ice nucleating operations. And I'll leave it at this, don't eat the snow. And I don't say that lightly. Well, and we've seen this over the last years, right, with um, a lot of social media videos of people examining this a little, little closer, try to make it do what natural snow would do, melt when you put a lighter to it, um, and, and try to make that water freeze in a proper way. All of these things, these elements don't behave like they would in a natural setting, which makes it that much more obvious that we're not dealing with completely natural elements, but we're dealing with chemicals within those elements. I'm going to play devil's advocate here for a moment. The narrative in the mainstream has been for a very long time now, and the consensus, if you will, of science, mainstream science, that uh, there is man-made climate change happening, that we are responsible for that. And the consensus has been now in, in this narrative for a, quite a long time that we're going on the warming trajectory, and that causes a lot of problems wouldn't it make more sense from their perspective to drive their narrative home if they're all in the same team to push a warm weather event at an unusual time rather than a cold weather event? That's a very appropriate question, but I would, I would argue that it serves them better to have a population that's completely divided as to the true state of the climate and a divided population can't stand against the power structure. And in regard to the business as usual carbon fuel industry, it certainly serves them to have a divided population that's not really able to clearly see the severity of damage being done to the planet. So we know that, again, in the carbon fuel industry, when we look at the 
climate conferences, as we discussed off the air, let's let's look at the correlation between these cool downs and certain holidays, like right now, Christmas, this giant cool down just in time for Christmas. Again, it, a profound warm up warm up is scheduled immediately after this. And I ask listeners to remember I said that, that immediately after this coast to coast cool down with all the sensationalized headlines, what's scheduled at the moment is a very profound warm up of the entire lower 48 states. If we look at the climate conferences, is it a coincidence that at the Cancun climate conference, there were record war- record cold temperatures at the conference in spite of record and above normal temperatures completely surrounding that conference? Copenhagen climate conference, same scenario. Record cold at the conference at the time of the conference, warmer temperatures surrounding areas. The COP27 conference that just happened, and many of your listeners may remember that, some of the media covered it here. We had a coast-to-coast cool down in the U.S. during that conference, and they don't accomplish anything at these conferences except behind closed doors to force nations to either actively or passively go along with the climate engineering operations while they keep business as usual. John, I think you would agree. Have you seen any meaningful reduction in carbon fuel anything? And I'm not stating the, the quote, green energy is a silver bullet either it's anything but it's it's not renewable so-called renewable energy is not truly renewable in any sense so i'm not saying that's a cure either but we are still increasing our use of carbon fuels these conferences mean nothing and again it's a way of dividing the population keeping the infighting going while keeping business as usual does that make sense oh it it does make sense and i i want to you know because you said earlier that you your reporting is non-political on geoengineering dot uh, geoengineeringwatch.org. Um, but if we look at the political landscape, we see now harder than ever a clear divide. And that divide is that one side that really pushes the climate change um, agenda, if you will, and and the very senseless, to me, senseless actions connected to it because they're not really changing anything. They're just putting a greater control system in place to control society. They're not really changing anything. But just as bad on the other side of the aisle, simply because these topics have been divided politically rather than being a common sense issue, one side is saying we should just keep doing what we have been doing. When one thing is abundantly clear, if you want to understand if your emissions that come out of your car are good or bad, just put your nose to your exhaust for five minutes and see what happens. And this is symbolically speaking, I'm not telling you to actually do it, but you would die. You would die after five minutes of breathing in those fumes. So we need to understand this is not a political subject, but but Dana, I think what's frustrating to many people who see it is there are no real solutions being suggested. Technologies that would actually be um, not just sustainable, but regenerative or have been suppressed for such a long time. So what are these people, what, what is their end game? What are they really playing? Because it's definitely not for the benefit of the planet. It is definitely not. It's about power and control. There is no benevolence in these operations whatsoever. And your summary of the overall landscape was completely on target, John, completely. And, and this is where the divide serves those in power so well to maintain their power, to keep that infighting going. And, uh, the so-called green communities, again, keeping business as usual, flying to these kind of climate conferences in their private jets. How hypocritical is that? We have individuals like Al Gore that own stock in the very companies he claims to be fighting against. So again, it's it's total hypocrisy on, on both sides of the fence, really. And this uh, paradigm that we're on with potentially better technologies being suppressed, the business as usual technology is being maximized. This is a recipe for near-term planetary omnicide. And that is indeed the course we're on. And I ask people to consider that when we're going through 100 million barrels of carbon fuel a day, that's inconceivable. Of course, that has a maximum, a massive effect on the planet. Climate engineering does as well. So it's a not, a not a this or that equation. It's a this and that. Every form of human activity that affects the energy balance of the planet is a massive problem. And mathematically, statistically, right now, the planet's warming at the thermal energy equivalent rate. 
of seven Hiroshima bombs per second. That's very difficult to get one's arms around. It's That's how fast the planet is warming. Most of that heat has gone into the oceans. We've seen seawater temperatures rise in some regions of the Arctic. There's ocean temperatures as much as 25 degrees Fahrenheit above the historical normal. That is absolutely alarming beyond belief. And to put that into perspective, a cubic meter of seawater can contain 4,000 times the thermal energy of a cubic meter of air. So that is an inconceivable amount of heat that has gone into the oceans. We have other levels of climate engineering too that, that plug into this, John, that most are completely unaware of. It's called ocean fertilization. So as they're spraying the skies over the oceans to the stated purpose to block some of the sun's incoming thermal energy, even though they're trapping more heat than they deflect, and warming the planet even faster overall, these materials settle down to the sea surface and create what amounts to an algae bloom that sucks up some of the carbon from the atmosphere, but that then acidifies the oceans even faster and creates hypoxic and anoxic zones, dead zones. We know now some of these materials they're using are aluminum. We have peer-reviewed study that the whales are packed full of aluminum along with much of the other marine life I'm not trying to branch off onto a different subject, but I'm saying the scope and scale of climate engineering operations from the engineered winter events, which we're experiencing right now, to ocean iron fertilization, all these operations, everything sprayed into the skies that's manipulated with radio frequency transmissions is all cumulatively destroying the ozone layer without which we die. It's The damage already done is, is horrific. It's, it's being masked. This issue itself is one that will very soon determine our collective futures. And then we have the biological aspect. Again, we have elements now in the mix, polymer fibers and graphene that we know militarily are used for biological operations to carry pathogens from the cloud to the ground. So would that not be a, a huge level for concern as well? So, and, and when you have these engineered winter events, there's in, in those types of temperatures and those conditions, that's very conducive to that type of biological transport to keep those elements functional from the standpoint of that type of operation. So this, all of this adds up to a very alarming scenario. And, and again, the, the bottom line is this, this type of engineered event, Winter Storm Elliot, by the way, that's the, the name, they, they're naming these storms now to make it more theatrical, leave a deeper impression. This is an engineered event, period. You don't get winter storms with moisture fed off the record warm Gulf of Mexico. And that's exactly what we have. It's what we all feel, I think. I mean, you know, this, this is the beauty about human intuition. When you're in tune with it, you know it. And you feel when something is so out of whack with nature. And, and Dane, not to in any way diminish the extreme situation we find ourselves in, in terms of the geoengineering, in terms of human activity, which... I so often, you know, th this is such a divided debate, but I want to make one thing clear. What we have been doing to Mother Earth is horrific abuse of the worst kind, and we can't talk that away. We can, of course, talk about what action would be more appropriate than the ones that, you know, people are taking now. But I want to say, I want to ask you something beyond all of this. My own research and the research of many others um, would suggest that Earth is going through cycles. And these cycles are, of course, bigger than just Earth. They're, they're um, representative of a whole sphere. And part of these cycles is a warming up and cooling down. Are we also, is this also an effect that we're experiencing? And if this is true and we are experiencing such a cycle where Earth is warming up due to many factors, how would we appropriately deal with it? Well, this cyclical pattern that we are on now, the Earth is in the elliptical phase of its orbit. It was beginning to cool before the Industrial Revolution, as it has between ice ages. But the momentum, the thermal energy production, the heat engine of industrialized society completely overwhelmed that and now has made that cyclical pattern completely moot. If we look at the... For example, the Maunder Minimum, the, the mini ice age, that was a 0.25% reduction in solar irradiance, solar energy, one four hundredth. That is 
virtually meaningless against the backdrop of the heat engine of industrialized militarized society. So we see a unbelievably profound, in fact, it's, it doesn't exist in the paleo data record of the Earth's history, this, this type of uh, warm up in the geologic blink of an eye. And, and again, I, I stress it's very difficult for people to look past, for example, they're freezing right now and the surface, very unnatural, cold, cool down. And it feels unnatural, by the way, for those that are experiencing this kind of a cold, it's a very penetrating chemical cold. In fact, people do smell chemicals in some of this mix. It, it's very common. And the frozen material is very different from a historically naturally nucleated material. It's, it's, it stays frozen longer, even at above freezing temperatures. It's very slick because it contains surfactants. Surfactants are what makes soap, soap. And it's part of the mix because it keeps the particles from sticking together. That's why it's in the climate engineering mix. We see surfactants named in the material suppliers, elements list. So when people are so cold, it's hard for them to imagine. And this is back to your original question of why, John. It's hard for them to imagine how it could be warm somewhere when it's so cold in their immediate circumstances. And what we're asking people to do is, is look past those circumstances. The eastern half of the U.S. lower 48 is about, it's less than 1% of the Earth's surface area. Less than 1%. That's not an indicator of the state of the planet. Not at all. So we're asking people to, again, look past their immediate horizon Look toward the motive of those in power engineering this type of event, sensationalizing it as they clearly do. And that should be a big red flag also, shouldn't it, John? When you see this type of matrix-owned mainstream media sensationalizing these events so completely, that should be a big red flag as to the motive behind them as well. So, And look at the rebound that's going to come immediately after this. So we're asking people, again, dig deeper. Simply dig deeper and, and whatever cyclical patterns, back to your original question, that the planet has gone through, it does go through, it's being completely negated by the damage that the human race is inflicting on the planet from every source. I'm not just citing climate engineering. I mean, we've been very poor stewards of the planet. We're cutting down the forests, we're, we're paving the planet, we're poisoning the oceans. So all of that is a problem. But the intentional intervention, biggest problem of all, planet can't respond to the damage done with a climate engineering straitjacket. Which is such an important uh, piece of information because that's a missing piece in so many of these discussions is the planet cannot use its own regenerative mechanisms because it's constantly being bombarded uh, with something that in, does or disables that. Now, Dane, people and which I'm, I'm very thankful for. People today in 2022, in, in, in this great awakening that we find ourselves in, they constantly ask the question, what can we do? Which I love that people are asking the question because that's what it's all about. But let's say from a practical level, um, where people enter any kind of political process, it's usually grassroots, local level, you know, smaller communities, maybe they run for mayor, city council, whatever. What can these small entities do in the, within the political process? What could someone do or begin to do to affect change? There's many things we can do. And if I could, before I forget to cite these, and I'll back up to that question in a moment if I can, John, just to cite, a couple, to cite a couple more examples of chemical ice nucleation that you, you may remember as well. I meant to bring this up earlier. In 2013, you may remember that there was 100,000 cattle killed in South Dakota by a flash snowstorm. Many might remember that. We recorded the temperature maps in the U.S. at that time. So the snow starts falling in South Dakota at 40 degrees. What's snow doing falling at 40 degrees? This is October 4th, I believe. That's very early in the year for that to happen. And to kill 100,000 cold-hardy cattle? with snow starting to fall at 40 degrees at the same time. And we recorded the maps at Geoengineering Watch. We have them on some of our reports from that time. It was 89 degrees and raining in Kansas City. How can there be a blizzard in Dakota when it's 89 degrees in Kansas City? It was 85 degrees and raining in Chicago. This is absolutely winter weather warfare, period. Killed 100,000 cattle. Two days later, they're laying around in the mud, dead. And this, this material is very adhesive. It tends to stick to hides and snouts and when cows can't breathe through their nose they die they won't breathe through their mouth 
We had 250,000 alpacas killed in South America. Cold hardy alpacas, same scenario. Chemical ice nucleation for weather modification. Think what this is doing, John, to the animals, to the flora, the, the fauna. It, they can't take this kind of flash chemical cool down. Is it any wonder that the insects are dying? The wildlife is dying and they're being exposed to completely unnatural toxic elements. And, and so all of this, again, adds up to it adds up to planetary omnicide. And we see other extreme examples. Amarillo, Texas, also 2013. May 1st, 2013, Amarillo, Texas, 100 degrees on the ground, all time record high snow the next day. That should be a huge red flag for people. This is not natural. What we're asking people to do is to understand there can't be any legitimate discussion about the climate without addressing climate engineering first and foremost. And we're asking the people who I think truly believe they're fighting against climate engineering, but then pretend that events like this are natural, which they are not. And in doing so, that is exactly the narrative the climate engineers and the power structure wants for people who otherwise would fight climate engineering to somehow then claim this type of event is proof of global cooling, which it is not. It's proof of climate engineering. So we're asking any people, whatever their perspective is on the climate or the state of the climate, again, from, from any side of the fence, we can't have a legitimate discussion on the issue without discussing climate engineering first and foremost. And as far as what people can do, and that what I just stated, everything I just stated is part of what they can do to understand the basic components of this type of engineering. It's cloud seeding with patented processes of chemical ice nucleation for weather modification. It's an engineered winter event. And that is every bit as much a problem as the very visible trails that people recognize as geoengineering, but they then don't recognize that this type of event is also geoengineering. So if they understand the fundamentals and they can communicate that to others in a way that is credible and that others can verify, again, using the science terms, climate engineering, geoengineering, instead of the non-science terms. And to pass on credible data, that's what we try to be at geoengineeringwatch.org to provide links for people to pass on, just like with this event right now. We have an engineering winter section that covers all of what's happening right now with images and patents and uh, film footage of Saudi Arabia snow or snow in the pyramids. You've, you've seen that before, right, John? These, these these really sensationalized reports of snow in the pyramids for the first time in history and that kind of thing, right? Yes, absolutely. Unfortunately. <laughs> That's exactly what those events are used for. And sure, it was 80 degrees the day before and 80 degrees the day after, but nobody talks about that. Nobody talks about Denver, Colorado every year now for the last three or four years. In spring, they'll engineer an event where they go, they literally have gone from all time record high of 85 degrees to single digits in less than 24 hours. That is not nature. And they use Denver for that, by the way, a lot because Denver's in a basin, as you know. And when you chemically nucleate this material, it creates a cold dense layer that settles to the surface. Just like, John, when you go into a market and you, you see a freezer that's completely open on top, but the cold air sits in that basin. And that's exactly what they're doing on an extremely large scale. And that's why they use Denver for those operations so regularly and sensationalize it. So we're asking people to, to recognize that all of this is engineered weather, period. This is engineered winter weather warfare that we see right now. But if you can pass on credible data to somebody, plant the seed and allow it to sink in, that's what makes the difference. And if we can wake up enough John, if we can wake up enough individuals where this issue is forced to light, again, I would argue more than anything else, it would cause a shockwave around the world, a shockwave of awakening when people understand that they have been subjected to this experiment without their knowledge, without their consent, an experiment from which there is no return, an experiment which will completely negate the future of their posterity. I would argue that awakening could not be stomped out. And we need to get to that point. We need to get there fast. And that will take all of those that are already awake and aware. It will take all of our collective efforts. But if, if we apply those efforts, I would argue we could yet make a profound difference, even at this late hour. I love your optimism. And I love that, you know, the, there's, there's this intensity, uh, but very founded intensity that you have uh, and, and a love and passion for this work and which which is always feelable in our conversations, Dane. 
Um, when I, if I hear you right, what you're saying is like everything else, we need to reach a tipping point. We need to reach the hundredth monkey effect, if you will, and literally bring this uh, to a mass awareness. And then we cannot even perceive what might happen because then there's a whole energy of its own that begins to affect change. So as always, Absolutely. you know, as always, this is kind of the pattern. So you have, you've been working on this and in this field for many years and you have accumulated a, a plethora of data, of videos, of documentaries, of everything that people might need to help others see the picture. What do you suggest is the best way to do it? Where can people find you, your work and how can they share it? And what is the best piece to share uh, with others? geoengineeringwatch.org again there's sections at the top of that because different parts of the world are going through different engineered scenarios and for example in the west the drought here is apocalyptic they will not let it rain enough here we're 500 inches of rain short since 2007 where i live 500 everything is dying the rain that does fall is toxic it's killing soil microbiome it's killing root systems uh, again there's so many aspects of this of this issue that need to be known so people can go to the again the top of the homepage of geoengineering watch engineering drought engineering winter engineering wildfires all of that's there those are extensive sections so share what's appropriate for the conditions that you're in at that time and for the people around you to see and not to overload them but continue to stoke these fires of awareness and that helps people to awaken and i know this is a very daunting journey john i know that it's been so arduous for me i've for me, it's the treadmill that never stops. And sometimes I become weary and I feel like I'm, I'm, I've am I'm stumbled and fallen on the treadmill and I'm hanging onto the bar. My feet are dragging on the belt. Metaphorically, that's what I feel like. But I constantly, I, I, I summon the energy to keep going because I know that every creature out there in the forest, every bat, bird, bear, bee, all of them have no voice except for us. And, and I was trekking through a an area of the forest that 20 years ago where I would hear a, a chorus of frogs and tree frogs. And it was beautiful. It was life. It was the web of life. And I, in a recent trek there, I heard one lowly frog that could barely croak. And it, it brought tears to my eyes. It, it filled me with angst and rage and that, that this could go on, that humans could do this to the, to the web of life. And that, and that, I turn that rage to fuel for this for this fight. So long as that single frog is willing to fight on, to survive, to play his part in the symphony of life, I will play my part. And again, I would argue collectively that consciousness for all of us in this fight together could make a difference that we can't truly quantify or even understand that our cumulative efforts are so incredibly profoundly important and now is that time. We are the ones we've been waiting for. Absolutely, we are the ones we've been waiting for. Thank you so much, Dane, for um, for this beautiful speech, if you will. Um, and it's more than that. It's a visual. It's it's feeling. It's emotion. And this is how we reach each other. Another thing that I'm reminded of these in these days is we have the winter solstice that just happened. We have the celebration of Christmas. We have moving into a new year. And one thing that happens around this time of year is kind of a, um, a a more focused energy, if you will. People are focused on similar things and maybe even similar emotions. Mm -hmm. And I, I have to remind myself that when we, like you, emanate so much love for creation, we also create an energetic field that carries it and that affects change. So that is also very important that this, despite what we're observing and we could become angry and, and, um, and, you know, and, and even, and even despair at some points, it is so important that we keep our own vibrations and frequencies high because that's how we're most effective and your love shines through it all. And I appreciate it really, uh, deeply. And I want to thank you for all the work you do on behalf of, you know, the human family. Um, and thank you for your time today, sir. We really, really appreciate it. It's a team effort. John, and my deepest gratitude to you, to all those who follow you and your inspiring message. And I'll leave with this image that I keep before me always, that in the deepest, darkest concrete jungle of urban sprawl, if there's a single crack in the concrete, 
life springs forth. A blade of grass, a flower, life only needs a chance. And we need to give it that chance. And the greatest leap we can take in the right direction at this moment is to stop the intentional interference with the planet's life support systems that, again, can also at any point in time of the power structure's choosing be used to disperse something highly toxic, not just affecting us, but the entire web of life. It's already toxic, but they can they could do much more anytime they want. We need to bring these programs to light and to a halt, free the planet from this insanity and allow it to respond. And if we could do that, it would be the it would be a quantum leap in the right direction. Thank you for your willingness to face this issue, John. Amen, sir. Thank you so much. And Inspire Tribe, ultimately, we the people are the power structure. We the people can affect all the changes that we want to affect. It, it's really up to us. And we're like Dane said so beautifully, we're the ones we've been waiting for. Dane Wigington of geoengineeringwatch.org. Thank you again for joining us today, Inspire Tribe. Please visit the website, educate yourself, share, bring this to your friends, bring this to your mayor, bring this to your city council, bring this to the attention of everyone. Um, so ultimately we can create that tipping point. Thank the you. Gaming documentary, if I could finish, sorry, John, I yes, forgot sir. to mention that, but a single tool, if they're going to share a single link, the most complete, is the groundbreaking documentary, The Dimming, available on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org for free. We posted it for free the moment it was done. And that is the most complete single link. I couldn't agree more. Um, this was as you know as information packed as it could be, but also um, shows you know visuals. And it's it's if you can say that easy to digest. You know if you can say it for a topic like this. Yes. Dane, thank you again, Inspired Tribe. Thank you all so much. Uh, on behalf of the Inspired team here, Christine and I, we're wishing you all a very, very Merry Christmas. Um, spend some time with your loved ones, share the love, and let's move forward with renewed energy into uh, the battle and the actions we all have to take. We love you all. We appreciate you. And we'll be back with you again very, very soon. Thank you, John. We're more dedicated than ever to provide authentic, truthful, and uncensored information and inspiration. That's why we created the Inspired Community on a free speech platform, Locals. There is no censorship, a free flow of information, and it's more personal and intimate. And you can join us as a free member or a paid supporter. Please visit inspired.locals.com and join us today.